Back here, first things first, three-time Super Bowl champ, Mark Solareth is here with us. Hey, Stink, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I am it's good great. to be with you guys. Yeah. Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> All day. All Tremendous day. Christmas day. card, man. Thank you, brother. You I really have a lovely family. Well, thank I, the missus. The, the missus, yes. You can thank the missus for uh, yes. producing the beautiful children. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> yes. a great way. And from that, yeah. we will transition right to the Steelers. I, somehow. On Sunday, the Steelers picked up a season-saving win against the Patriots, a team that has dominated them in recent years. How do you define dominated? Well, before Sunday, the Steelers had lost five straight to the Pats by a combined six. 64 points. All that changed Sunday with Pittsburgh's win. However, big Ben Roethlisberger is trying to keep things in perspective, not get too carried away with the results. Here's what he had to say about beating New England. Well, anytime a team beats you way more than you beat them, you definitely want to go get them. So, yeah, it, it means something. I mean, they're kind of the team of uh, that everyone wants to beat all the time. So when you when you beat them, it, it makes you feel a little a little more special. But Winning at home and, and this time of year, you just want to get a win against anybody. All right, Stink, I get that, and yes, that's true. But how important was this win over the Patriots to the Steelers and what this right. could do for them, propel right. them at this point in the season? Well, one, it's a huge, I mean, it's a huge victory. This time of year, everybody's beat up, and they only have a half-game lead over Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So they've got two games left. They have to go to New Orleans. This was a huge win. The other thing is, it's one of those situations where not only have the New England Patriots, you know, we were talking about my family Christmas card. Yes. New England Patriots have been the daddy, right? Is you change some things up. You found a way to bracket the inside receivers in both uh, Gronkowski and Edelman, especially late in that football game. You took them out. You said, we'll play some man on the edge, and we're just going to make sure our guys can hold up. We're going to give them that opportunity. We're going to rush the passer in doing that. We're going to bring pressure. So they changed up kind of what they've done. The other thing about the Steelers here in recent, and just in recent weeks, they are so talented on the outside that they oftentimes just say, you know what, we're not going to run it. We choose not to run it. And they were consistent last week against the Patriots. They did, they had a couple of wrinkles with that pitch counter, which I hadn't seen before. So they ran the, they ran a counter play off of a pitch look. So they mm -hmm. pitched it out, stab, let everybody clear, and then go back against the grain. So they did a phenomenal job with that, changing some things up. And they rushed it, what, what 158 yards? So they changed kind of their personality when taking on the New England Patriots. They almost Patriot, they almost went out and New England, New England. And, and that yeah. to me is a big psychological factor for them going down the stretch. So it was a huge win for them. Before I get to what the impact it had on their season, I want to follow up on something you said because you weren't here Monday, but Monday, uh -huh. Chris made the exact same observation about that specific play, about the toss, the, the toss play that they the then toss ran counter, a counter right. that, and how unique it was. Why was it so, it stuck out to you watching the game, stuck out to you separately. Right. Why was it so effective? Well, one, once you toss the ball, dudes are flying. They're, oh, yeah. they're running. I mean, they are running. There's only one play. Right. So they're that, trying not to get the edge. Right. Belichick team, oh, man, it's so hard to run around them. But their concept, there's only one play. And there's no receiver coming back the other way to run some type of reverse. So they're making sure they're trying to get as many bodies to that edge as possible. Right. And then what it ends up doing for you as an offensive lineman is once you take as a linebacker, you take that hard step or you take a couple of steps that way, it automatically creates an angle for me. Because as I go down, I walk up to the second level, you're blocked. You've blocked yourself off the action. So when you look at shotgun runs, okay, as an offense, the issue with shotgun runs is you take about 40% of your playbook in the running game and you scrap pile it. Right, you just so get it's not rid of the it. same reads and everything for the defense. Right, and and so when you when you start running out of shotgun, there just aren't as many plays that you can actually execute. So they've created a way to run counter out of shotgun. And again, like I said, I hadn't seen it before. Like one of the things I love about sitting in my room at the hotel and watching film is every week I can get through. I, I went through six hours of film last night, and you will find something. That you haven't, that you seen, haven't seen, or mm -hmm. something that's just tremendous. That you're like, oh my God! You see how they got to, you know, whatever that play is, or you see how they ran that route combination, or you see what the defense did to try to stop that. Those are the things you love about this game, and they created a play for themselves that New England, throughout the entirety of that game, even late in that game, when they had to have a stop, 
mm -hmm. where, that, where they, they were struggling yep. stopping that play. And confidence wise, when you beat a team that has a world championship pedigree, someone like Tom Brady, someone, a team, an organization that you struggle with, and you're struggling, it's gonna give you a tremendous amount of confidence. Sometimes you can add just a little wrinkle and everything which Pittsburgh was able to do with the toss counter. But man, coming down the stretch, you need to have confidence that you can win game and win games. And the reason how you get confidence is by winning games. Right. Winning closely contested games against very, very good teams. Now, the Browns are a much improved team, but if Ben Roethlisberger, because Ben always got a little bit of untruth off in everything that he says, well, son, if they beat Cleveland at home in December, it's not as big. Now, Cleveland hopes to get in some of those big games, but beating New England, a team that has yeah. been your daddy yeah, on the absolutely. Christmas card for a long, right. long yeah, time, yeah. I mean, that right there, I believe, is significant, and this franchise was really struggling, Nick. Listen, the, the win was critical because if they lost this week, they're in eighth place in the AFC with two games left, headed to New Orleans. Like, you mentioned they were a half game up on Baltimore. They're still a half game up on Baltimore because right. Baltimore won again. So I, I don't think it's, I don't want to say it saved their season. It kept their season alive, but their season ain't saved yet. They, they go in and lose this week, let's see what Baltimore does, what Indy does, what Tennessee does, because they could be in eighth place once again. So they, right. they, they, their season got not a pardon, but a stay of execution, I, I, if you will. I, they, they have to keep winning football right. games oh, oh, because oh, Indy and Tennessee I'm, are right and, there. And let me tell you something now. I mean, Indy and Tennessee playing really well. Uh, Indy, you know, what they're doing offensively, um, the way they're running the ball, uh, Tennessee, great defense. Uh, nobody wants to play Baltimore. I'm going to tell you right now that Pittsburgh has a vested interest in keeping Baltimore out of the playoffs because the offense that they're running right now, that 1972 SEC caliber offense, <laughs> I'm telling you what, nobody knows how to defend that. And they've got a historically good defense, and it would be one of the best defenses in history or recent history if they could just turn people over. Right. They're top five in every Everything, category. But they, every they're category. bottom five in turnovers forced. It's so bizarre. Yeah. The other wrinkle in all this is James Conner. How much do they need him to be healthy if they are going to make a legitimate playoff run? I'm a little concerned about his injury. When he got hurt, I thought it was a high ankle sprain. Um, the people were trying to train me on TV, tell me, Chris, stop trying to act like yes, you're a doctor Chris. and everything. <laughs> but he got hurt. He hasn't been back for a couple weeks. A normal ankle sprain, you're back seven to 10 days. High ankle sprain, you need three to four weeks. Wide receivers and running backs, it affects them the most on the offensive side. So. I like the productivity they had last week. It would be nice to be able to utilize Connor coming down the stretch. He could be utilized in the lineup, a spot duty against the Saints. But I'm going to be very, very careful careful because I like Samuel. I like what he brought to the party, and I'm going to give him 15 carries this week against the Saints. Yeah, I think the other thing you have to worry about, you go into the Saints, you're on that turf, you have an ankle sprain. That just doesn't give like grass gives. So now all of a sudden, with that high ankle sprain, if it is in fact a high ankle sprain, you catch it on the turf, you catch your toe, we've all had them. And they are some of the, I mean, when I had, I mean, I've had several high ankle sprains. It feels like when you catch your toe, like you have broken your leg. Uh. That's how bad they hurt. And you know, for a, a position like me, I just shoot my leg up. And so you I don't have out. to really feel your leg. Right, but I don't, I don't have you know, I have no feel on my foot, but I can play that way because I'm playing in a phone booth. Mm -hmm. Like you can't do that as a running back. So on the turf scares me a little bit. On If it was at home on the grass, I'd be less concerned about him playing, maybe getting 15 reps than I would be on the turf in New Orleans. I like it, public service announcement. Yeah. Grass is better than turf. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is. That's enough. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Mm. Tough guy. Coming up, nah, Jerry I live Jones. In Colorado. Says he's concerned about the Cowboys. Should he be? That's next on First Things. <laughs>